If you have been following our cabin videos, you know that we are on a process of creating our own tongue and groove paneling for the cabin. To be honest, Joe, the guy that owns this equipment right here, <laughs> he's been doing most of the work. We're also not necessarily gonna show the actual start where the tree was cut down, but after the tree's cut down, it's brought here to the sawmill where Joe cuts it into boards using his sawmill and then refines them down to the point where they're actually usable. This stack of lumber he has made, but we're actually gonna use the stack of lumber here as our table. This is one of our tongue and groove pieces. You can tell we have pretty wide boards. I like the way the wide boards look rather than a bunch of thin boards. And also it just takes fewer of the tongue and groove boards to cover a wall when they're so wide. Running them through the planer, we are trying to get the correct depth of board. I also noticed that Joe's children have been hard at work creating a masterpiece of art. We run the boards through a few times actually before we get the correct depth that we want. These ones are just kind of the samples that we're using to adjust the machine to be exactly what we want it to be. Once we have that done, we can start actually going through the pile and making some headway. The pile that Corey's taking from, we will take every single one of those boards, put it through the planer, and then make a pile over by me <laughs> right there where I'm setting the board. This takes hours to do because not only do we have to run every single one of those boards through the planer, we then run them through two more times. It seems like it will never end, but eventually I know it will, and we will have the boards that we need to put into our cabin. Believe it or not, Joe already did this with the other half of our lumber. This is only half of what we plan to need for the cabin, and who knows, maybe we'll need a little bit more. We don't plan on putting this in the bathroom, we'll do something a little bit different, but most of our cabin will have these boards all over the walls and on the ceiling. We chose Aspen because we think it's just beautiful. It's very light. Actually, in the video, it almost looks a little bit darker than it does in person. In person, it almost looks white, and we plan on using a very light stain in order to keep the lightness and brightness. We think it'll really brighten up the cabin. We don't want to use a ton of electricity lighting the cabin, so Having bright walls will make a big difference. We love the cabin look, but some cabins tend to be a little bit dark with the lumber that is used. So we're mitigating that and trying to do something also a little different. Eventually, like I said, we finished the whole pile. At this point, I actually thought we were done until Corey said that we were going to put them all back through again. And then we did it, like I said, one more time, so it was a long day. Between each time that we ran the boards through the planer, there would be a moment where we tested the boards a couple times to make sure that everything looked good, and again, it was the correct thickness that we were looking for. It just takes a bit of time and a bit of patience, but it really did turn out nicely in the end, so I'm thankful for it. The last round of running the boards through the planer, I would actually grab the board and bring it over to a pile on the table saw where Joe would put the board through the table saw at the exact width that we wanted the board to be and Logan would grab it from the other side. He also would pick up the little scraps from the board and put those in the wheelbarrow. We had to pay attention to make sure that our blue barrel of sawdust wasn't getting too full and backing up our sawdust collection system. We ended up with a ton, a ton, a ton of sawdust throughout the day. Our big tub got too full, so we just kind of made a pile on the ground. Up close, you can see we really didn't take much off the width of the board, but it did end up being a wheelbarrow full of these little scraps that we would break down. I didn't realize how much uh, waste or I guess different products of wood this caused to uh, happen. We ended up with a lot of sawdust and little pieces, but nothing goes to waste. The sawdust is used depending on the type of sawdust for different animals and projects around the area. The scraps are used for burning and tinder. 
you can see the planer makes the board have a little bit of a texture on the top as we put the boards through the next step which will be the tongue and groove machine we will actually sand those grooves off the top these boards over here are the ones that didn't make the cut you can see they're not quite perfect enough <laughs> to turn into tongue and groove it just wouldn't work well so those get set off to the side for a different project as well Corey and Joe took apart the whole sawdust system and moved it over to the next machine where we will be actually making the tongue and groove the first board is getting put into the machine and you can actually see the process through the top of the machine there is glass or like plexiglass on the top so you can watch the board go through not only is it sanding the top of the board but it's cutting the tongue and groove onto the sides of the board they look at it and make sure that everything looks right so that we have the exact perfect <laughs> board situation that we want I thought this was really cool that you put the board through and it just comes out perfect like that. I imagine them being in the cabin and I just can't wait. I get so excited about it. We make yet another pile of the boards as they're complete and put through the tongue and groove machine. It's not called the tongue and groove machine. I don't actually know the name of it but it can cut different edges onto the board and we happen to put in the blades for tongue and groove on this go round. Corey and I kind of take turns setting the boards off to the side and pulling them through the machine, but mostly Corey does it. Even though this machine does sand the top and the bottom of the boards to be nice and smooth, there are still some imperfections and Corey really likes things to be sanded perfectly so we will be taking this home to sand it and stain it before bringing it to the cabin. This is our finished product. We kind of admired it for a while. <laughs> it was a lot of work, a lot a lot of work for our boards. Corey has already been working on sanding the first batch of boards. And we're excited to work on these as well. The cleanup process is kind of extensive. Sawdust gets everywhere, including on me. So Corey's helping me get cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> and Scratches and the dimple marks. You're talking so loud because of your head. <laughs> That's what we're trying to fix. <laughs> the scratch marks? Oh, this looks really pretty and like wavy. is our tongue and groove for the cabin at least a chunk of it and it needs to be sanded and finished and Corey's been working on it how's it going slow <laughs> trim for windows and doors and baseboard and whatever we may need it for we're probably gonna need a bunch more than this this is some footage of Corey sanding the boards that we have already brought home from the first go round. I'm thankful that Corey did a lot of the sanding. He did a great job. All of this work is going to come together super nicely in our cabin and I can't wait to see the results and I also can't wait to show you.